Continuing from last week, right, we're going to talk about, well, not talk about, yeah, just discuss, you know, what is Buddha nature, right? What, so we, there are, you know, we have what we call a Buddha nature class. So um, basically what we want to do is just to understand, you know, to, you know, there are certain prerequisites, okay? The Buddha nature class really is not for everybody because if you don't have a good fundamental foundation on on, on knowing what, you know what the Tao is. It's 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 not that easy to go to the higher level, understanding what the Buddha nature class. Because the the and the reason for 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 why we should understand the Buddha nature or or the topic is that when we read the Buddha scriptures or suttas sutras or really even um, the Confucian you know four books. Or the uh, what we call Lao Tzu, uh, the Book of the Way and the Life. If you don't really understand Buddha nature, you're not. You're only going to understand those Confucian uh, 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 books or the Lao Tzu's book, or even the Buddha scriptures at a very superficial level. Okay, so that's and 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 that's that's why it's important to understand to to have a good foundation to understand. About Buddha nature, all right. That that's the re- that's the key cornerstone reason. Because because if you don't, then you're no better, or your level of understanding will be just like most scholars. They only look at from the from a, you can say from a philosophical or intellectual angle, all right. And so that's and that's 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 not what the Tao is. Okay, actually, you know, the Tao is what the Buddha nature. It, it, is talking about okay so 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 or Buddha nature involved okay so now I think uh, from last week you know we we talked about something that's very you know you can say it's pretty abstract the fourfold negations right there's a there's a Hindu term Sanskrit term for that it's called the Kastalaka or whatever <laughs> I don't know so, but anyway it's it's uh, actually the fourfold negations even though it was expounded in the talked about in the Surangama Sutra, among other sutras. I mean, it, they talk, they mentioned it. Um, it's it's really well, partly it's a result of what we call Buddha's unanswered questions. It's called the go uh, the noble silence, right? Wu Ji, okay, noble silence, okay. Uh, for those who knows Chinese, it's called Wu Ji. They call it Wu Ji. Uh, and, and the reason why is because during Buddha's time, there were many different schools of, of philosophy or thought, you know, uh, you know, views, or you can say views on, you know, on, on life, on, on, on existence, etc., etc. Okay, there are just just like, just like you know, during the time of Jesus, etc. I mean, you know, even even today, okay, it doesn't matter. So there were many many different schools of thought or views. You can say viewpoints. All right. And a lot of times, a lot of those uh, proponents of those views, you know, gurus or disciples, often question, you know, Buddha's teachings, you know, and Buddha's, you know, what Buddha was saying, Buddha's message, if you will, teachings, message. And, and they have these debates, not debates, discussions, okay? So, so that's what it is, okay? So, so you know, there are, you guys can look it up in the, in the internet. It's called the 14 Unanswered Questions. Okay, so sometimes people at you know some of the schools of thought, some people are like the Brahmas. I guess you heard you guys heard of the Brahmas, right? That's a Hindu tradition. It's a, it's a religion. You can say it's a religion. You know, they believe that there's some kind of in, eternal being. You know, an eternal spirit. They call it the you know the, the three of them, the three, the Brahma, the the Vishnu, and the Shiva, right? I mean, you guys familiar with that? Okay, so they consider the three, the pantheon of gods, they're deities. So they believe that those deities are eternal, you know, etc., all-powerful, supreme, etc., etc. Actually, Buddha said that's not true. <laughs> so, so Buddha denied that. Okay, he says, even then, that's not true. They're not really eternal. They're just celestial beings, which is true, which I'll get to when we talk about the trikaya later on. Okay, that's why we have to introduce these concepts. All right, and, and then there are other people who believe that Nothing exists. It's like a vacuum. Vacuum. Nothing exists. Everything is, is uh, <laughs> it's an illusion, <laughs> if you can call it. You know, right? I mentioned yes, uh, last week, it's, it's, a, it's a branch of philosophy. Even today, they call it idealism. 
Okay, so that means nothing is real until perceived. <laughs> but then the question is, who's the perceiver? <laughs> so is that perceiver real? <laughs> I don't know. So it goes, it's, it's, a, it's a, what they call it, a, uh, what, what called that? No, it's like a, yeah, vicious cycle. Yeah, so, 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 so it gets nowhere, right? So, so, so to, the, to, to the first two, uh, to, to, to the first school of view, which called the eternalist or physicalist, we, nowadays they call them physicalist, physicalist, physical, you know, physical, physicalist. Who believe that there's some entity, it could be, it could be, it could be tangible or non-tangible, that exists forever. That's eternal. You know, exists forever. That's eternal. That's called the physicalist or eternalist. Okay. So to those proponents or to those people who hold those views, Buddha would would counter them by saying, "No, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. There's emptiness. And why? Why is that? Why is that?" Because anything that has either tangible form or non-tangible form is not eternal because they are all a result of causality, or what we call dependent origination, what, what Buddha called dependent origination. Causality, I mean, for, for, for simplicity's sake, we, we, we say causality. <clears throat> so there's a cause that lead or that led to that form, whether tangible or intangible, all right? So if you look at tangible, the universe, the cosmos, there was some cause that led to the creation, okay, of this cosmos, all right? So, so long as those conditions, causes continue, then that form continue, will continue to exist. But when those causes in or conditions in, then those forms will also disappear, right? So from so that 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 just means that any type of form, tangible or intangible, has a beginning and has an end. Get it? So therefore it's not eternal. Understand? That's why Buddha say that's why it's called empty. That's what Buddha says. Empty, meaning that there's no what essence that's beyond causes. That's beyond cause. You get it? So that's, that's why Buddha say, that's the first full negation, right? He, he say to these internal, eternalists or physical, says, you're wrong. That view is wrong, okay? All right? And then to, those, to the ex, uh, like people who deny ex, uh, uh, existence or what we call non-existence, right? Or, you know, right? extinction, okay? Or, you know, the idealists or idealism that that's a branch of philosophy or you know or the more uh, the more extreme form which is called nihilism that means every, nothing exists buddha would counter by saying no you're wrong something exists <laughs> and and here's why because nihilism or idealism then would deny causality because if nothing exists there are no causes, right? There's no result, no cause, no result. Get it? Right? There would be no cause. Because if nothing exists, if everything's just empty, nothing can create anything. So therefore, there's no causality. And Buddha would say, that's wrong. Get it? Because Buddha says, there is causality. Unfortunately, there is causality. And, and here's why. Besides the theoretical perspective, Buddha would say, tell these, he would t talk to these nihilists, because in Buddha's day, there are there was a school of thought that just denies existence of causality, among others. There, there, there are a lot of schools. I mean, there are at least several dozen. But anyway, those are the main ones. Anyway, but anyway, because if you deny causality, then that means in this existence, <clears throat> I can do whatever I want, and, 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 and right, and, and don't worry about consequences. Right? Isn't that true? If you deny causality, right? But then. On a practical level, I mean, besides a moral level, okay, moral level, Buddha was approaching, you know, he, 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 there are different levels, I mean, of, of saying that that's wrong. One is on a moral level, then that's wrong, right? Because then I can't kill people and expect to have, suffer no consequences, right? I can't rob people and suffer no consequences. I can't hurt people and suffer no consequences, right? So that's on a moral level, that's wrong. But then on an even more basic level, uh, what was I going to say? All of us can say, hey, if I go out and get drunk tonight, I'm going to get a hangover tomorrow. So isn't that causality at work? Hello, right? 
I mean, you did something, right? Drink too much alcohol, and then you pay for it. You suffer the consequences with a hangover, right? So that's that's fundamental. So you can't deny that there's no causality. If that's a short span, of course, all right. That may, you know, the it, it, the span ranges. Okay, so that's from a very short span, a day or two. Okay, then to the long long term, it's called samsara. See, so we suffer. We have. Incarnation, right? So that's that's why Buddha countered the nihilism, nihilists, or the the idealists by saying, "Then that's wrong. That's not a proper view. Get it? That's not a proper understanding of existence or being." Okay? All right. So 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 that's why you know because and, and, because those are extreme views, very extreme, right? Extreme. They are one. On one hand, you have one extreme, and the other hand, you have the other extreme, right? So that's why, you know, Buddha, you know, he says both extremes are wrong, right? So he says Buddha, but so Buddha was saying this: his teachings, his dharmas, are what we call the middle way, middle path, okay? Because it 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 does not take sides; it does not take either extreme positions or views, okay? So that you have to understand that. You、right? have to understand, and that's what the Tao is, really. Now, then, the other two, I, I don't want, I don't want to spend time talking about four four because we, we talked about it last week, but. But we could go. You could go really in depth, and it kept, the other two are combinations of those two, those two extremes, and those are also extremes. All right. So Buddha did not say that those are all wrong. Okay. I just want to sum it up. So actually, by using the fourfold negations, Buddha is trying to describe what is the Tao. Actually, what is the Tao, or what is what we call uh, uh, Nirvana, or Dustness, Suchness, Oneness. Okay. Actually, the fourfold negation, because actually that oneness, that nirvana, that thusness, suchness is really indescribable. All right, it, it, it's beyond. It's it's beyond that that quote unquote state or condition or whatever you want to call it. Okay, that realm, whatever, is really indescribable. All right, it, it we we can't describe it. You can't say, oh, it's totally empty, because there is something. Okay, and yet you can't say that that there's always something because there's also emptiness. Now, we have to be careful. We sometimes use the term extinction and emptiness interchangeably, and, and that's not exactly correct. What Buddha meant by empty means that, or yeah, emptiness is that that he, what he's saying is that all passions, all afflictions, all notions of duality. Subject, object, right? Subject, object, duality. All attachments are extinct, and that to him, that's called emptiness. Understand? Okay. All right. So, so that's that. That's what he meant by that. Get it? Okay. All right. And so, when when the nihilists say, "Oh, everything, nothing exists," they're 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 not only saying those things don't exist, but they're also saying that there's no. Something you know, no. Whereas Buddha says, no, no, no. There is something, which is our Buddha nature. That oneness still exists. Get it? It's just that you can't describe what that oneness is. Is it a form? No, it's not a form because you can't touch it. Is it metaphysical? Well, we can't imagine it. You get it? So that okay. So that's why it's indescribable, and that that's really what the definition of nirvana. Now, nirvana, on the one level, on a basic level, on a You look it up in the Buddhist dictionary or in the scriptures. They would say it's extinction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it will say that. It will say that. But that extinction, like I said, does not mean no, no entity. Okay, or no, or nothing. Okay. What what the extinction means? What Buddha is saying is it's the extinction or the elimination of all passions, all 烦恼 all afflictions. All dualities, you know, all of that. You get it? All attachments. That's what really nirvana, the basic level, means. Understand? When he, when they say extinction, when they say so, then so then people say, oh, you know, when Buddha, when when Sakyamuni, Siddhartha attained Buddhahood during his, you know, at, you know, at age eighty, right? That when he's passed away, they say he attained nirvana. That's really not technically not correct. Actually, he attained nirvana when he became enlightened, okay, under the Bodhi tree, because he ex he extinguished or he eliminated 
all his afflictions at that point. Get it? It's not that when you die, you when we say we die or we lose our body, but that's that's not. What nirvana means, okay? Nirvana just means that you still can have a body. It doesn't, and that's why I get to the trikaya, okay? You know, just to lead to the trikaya, the concept of trikaya. You can still have a body, and you still be half nirvana. Get it? Or oh, half nirvana? <laughs> that, that's that's not really accurate, but that means you'd be in a state of nirvana. Maybe that's a better way of saying, okay? Okay, you still can have a body, like Jesus. Actually, all enlightened beings. If it, in physical form, are in nirvana because they what? What does that mean? Because they extinguished or eliminated all afflictions, all passions, all subject-object dualities, all attachments, etc., etc. Get it? That's what nirvana means. Nirvana is something that's it's not something that says, oh, when we die, we attain nirvana. That's 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 misconception. Get it? Okay. Then on that that's so that's one level of nirvana. Another level of nirvana is really it's indescribable. It's that one one ness. Okay, step yeah. Okay, so how do we relate uh, nirvana to uh, unparasamyasambodhi? Are they kind of equal? Yeah, yeah. You can say that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anuttarasamyasambodhi is maybe it's to say that it is it's it's a. It, 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 they're, on one level, on the highest level, they're interchangeable. You can say that, okay? It's just that we say anuttara samsambodhi is that it's a con, some kind of a goal, or some kind of level, some kind of level that you want to reach. You know, it's like saying, you know, in human terms, we have status, we have you know whatever, whatever. So, so anuttara samyasambodhi is you anuttara samyasambodhi is to use for cultivator. To say, oh, that's a level, a goal that you want to attain. But then, when you reach it, when you say we reach it, quote unquote, when we say reach it, then you are in a state of nirvana. Get it? But that. So, so, so on the one hand, nirvana is we say what extinction, right? Remember, it's extinction of all passions, all afflictions, all all attachments, all uh, uh, subject-object duality, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? All biases or all non-duality, all attachments, attachments. Okay, so when we reach that, then you say we're in nirvana. But isn't that the same thing as state of Buddhahood, enlightenment? And that's anuttara samyasambodhi at that level. You get it? So because really at that level, it's extremely hard to describe. Okay, it's ex- you really can't describe it. Actually, you really can't describe it because Buddha did not describe it, cannot describe. It. He would not describe. It. Okay, so anyway, but it's so all we can say is that. It, it is because it's absolute. Another way of saying it, it's an absolute. It's a. It's a <laughs> absolute. What's absolute? Describe absolute. I don't know. <laughs> What's absolute? Absolute has no what, no time, no space, no dimension, etc., etc. See, so it's hard to describe, right? Okay, so so that's 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 you know. Okay, so that okay. So now I want to get to the notion of trikaya. So that's why you know I I like to you know have people if they want to really. Proceed, you know, one way uh, step to understand more about the Buddha nature class. You have to be familiar with certain terms or, or concepts, concepts or teachings. You can say, okay. So we have a list, and and now, okay, I, I gotta I gotta qualify it, but we call it a glossary of terms for Buddha nature class. All right. Now, it's it's about eight pages long, but there's a lot, there's a lot in there. But the reason why I, 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 what's listed or what's Printed are just very basic level definitions. Okay, there's more advanced. Okay, and, and, but 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 there's you know because of time constraint and and room constraint. I don't want to make this too list too you know too many pages. It's already eight pages. I don't want to turn it into thirty pages or something like that. So so actually, not not all terms. Most term, a lot of the terms has a higher level meaning. Okay, understand has a higher level. All right, so so there is a trikaya. A nirvana is in there. Trikaya is in there. Okay, so let's go to trikaya. An example. I want to go to trikaya. Right. I mean, as an example. All right, san san. It should be page san san page one. It should be in page one, right? Near the bottom. Okay, so what are the trikaya or the three bodies? The the, the 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 mention of trikaya for, uh, 
uh, appear. I mean, it, it's it's scattered throughout a lot of the different sutras, but it's mentioned ex, uh, quite a great deal, or more in detail, in greater detail, in the Lankavatara Sutra. Anybody know what that is? That's the Lin Jie Jing, Lin Jie, Lin Jie, Jie Lin Jie Jing, Q Q I E, Lin Jie Jing. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's not a, it's not a well-known sutra. It's a uh, Lankavatara sutra. All right, it's a uh, they, they that that sutra is eh, pretty long. It's it, it deals a lot about it talks a lot about um, it talks about the trikaya in some detail, but also t- deals a lot about the notion of consciousness. You know the uh, five, six, seven, eight consciousness. Okay, the alaya. I, that but that uh, that's in here too. That's in here too. So. So I don't want to go into detail about that right now. I want to talk about trikaya first. Okay. So the trikaya, little translation means the three bodies. Okay. The three, yeah, three bodies. And what are the three bodies? Okay. So the three bodies are the dhammakaya, the sambhogakaya, and the nirmanakaya. Okay. And so what? So at a very basic understanding level, the the definition of the trikaya. Uh, the definition of those three are, you know, the Dharmakaya is the what we call the truth body. Literally, that's what it means, truth body, the ultimate reality body, the re- reality body, the 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 true nature body. <laughs> you know, so so it, it, it's it's hard to describe. Actually, okay, so 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 it just means you can say it's like our Buddha nature body. So so for for basic purposes, understanding purposes. We can say it's like our Buddha nature. Okay, it's not the soul. Okay, don't 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 mistake that for the soul. Okay, it's not the soul, it's not the spiritual. That's that's not it. Okay? It's just that it's that eternal you know ultimate reality being, essence, okay, or whatever, body, essence. Okay, essence. That's indescribable. So it's really that suchness. So I mentioned it. Suchness. It's really that thusness, suchness. Okay? All right? So it's like when we are at nirvana, quote unquote, it's that Dharma body. Okay? It's that Dharma body. Get it? Okay? So, all right? Okay? So that's, that's what the basic definition means. Okay? Then the second definition is what we call Sambhogakaya. Literally, literally, Sambhogakaya means. Bliss or reward body. Literally, that's what it means. Literally, that, that's what it means. Okay? And we can understand it to be like, you can say it's like our spiritual being, our spiritual being. And that's where we have notions of the soul, etc., or the atma, the atman, the atman, the self, the notion of the self, that spiritual or the consciousness, conscious being, or whatever you want to call it. Okay? So that's what it means. It's the spiritual. You can say it's the spiritual quote unquote form or manifestation. Alright? Okay, so that, that's what the Samboga Kaya means. Okay? And, and, and in more basic terms, it's like it would be an example, we say example of that would be like what? Would be like all the saints and sages in celestial heaven. Get it? In the the thirty two Diana heavens or whatever, thirty three, thirty two Diana heavens. So like Brahma uh, Brahma, uh, uh, Vishnu, Shiva, all the deities, quote unquote, deities, gods, quote unquote, would be Sambhogakaya, would be example in that realm or would be under that category. Okay? Get it? So you can say our spiritual realm, that's like our spiritual realm. You can call, you know, just to generalize, you can say that. Okay? So that's an example, all right, of what Sambhogakaya is. Or the Bodhisattvas, it's really the lower level Bodhisattvas because they're. 52 levels, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, so, you know, it's the celest- so, so an example would be the celestial realm, would be an example of the Sambhogakaya, the manifestation of the Sambhogakaya, get it? That's the, that's the Baosun, right, okay? And then the third term, or the third part, aspect of the Trikaya is what we call the Nirmanakaya, which literally translates as transformation body. Okay, so that's you can an example of that would be the physical realm, the physical realm. So it would be your physical body. You get it? Now the nirmanakaya would have a beginning and end. Get it? It's really the sambhogakaya too. Okay, sambhogakaya and the nirmanakaya, both of those 
have what we call dimensions. We call quote unquote dimensions. You get it? So that means there is a beginning and end. Understand? Whereas the first one, Dhammakaya, has no beginning, no end. It's remember I say it's pure body. We can call it, you know, it's a pure ex an example would be like nirvana. It's in the state of we can say tranquil, quiescence, pure, the absolute pureness, whatever you want to call it, okay? It just has no beginning no end. Remember the essence I say? The essence, that our essence, the Buddha nature has no beginning, no end. Get it? Okay, so that's the first, right? Whereas the second and third have what we call you can say limitations, you can call it dimensions. We call it dimensions, okay? We have dimensions. So there's a beginning and end. Get it? So that's why we say the deities like Brahma, you know, all that, all that are, when we say in the, sec in the second category, Sambhogakai has a beginning and end. Get it? Okay? So even notions of our spirits and soul, okay? And then the third, obviously, the physical realm has obviously a beginning and end, right? It has form, right? It has, it's tangible, you know, etc. Color, whatever, okay? All right, properties, has properties, right? I mean, the second one too, but, 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 but it's hard to describe because they're on a spiritual realm, okay? So, okay, so that's the basic, basic definition, okay, of what the trikaya means. Understand now? Okay, now, when I say Buddha, an enlightened being, actually, all of us <laughs> have all three, you know that? have all three. It's just that the Buddhas can have all three simultaneously. <laughs> or, you get it? Okay, all right? So, so when Siddhartha or Sakyamuni was in this realm, right? He has a Nirvana type. He had a physical body. But at the same time, his spiritual body is also pervasive throughout the celestial heavens. You know that? It's like being simultaneously at... Uh, more than one place at the same time. It's, it's like that. I mean, exam I'm just using an example. But also his Dharmakaya is also there, okay? It's, also, it's just that we humans, we quote-unquote unenlightened sentient beings, we separate the three. We think of the three, that the trikata, the three bodies, as separate entities. You get it? Or separate realms. Because we are not yet enlightened. When you're enlightened, it's all three. It's, in, it's one. Get it? All three is one. What, 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 for the Dharmakaya? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but then you have to define what's a subtle body, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so it just means, it's just that it's, it's intangible. It's really intangible. It's formless, but yet it has an essence, okay? So it's not extinction, you get it? So it's not nihilism to say, oh, nothing exists. It's not that, get it? It's just, it's just that it's pure. It's, it's, we call it pure, meaning that it has no duality. Nothing, it has no attachments. It has none of that. Understand? Yes. No, we call it undefiled. You can call it undefiled body. That's what we mean by pure, okay? Pure. But don't think of it as pure goodness. Don't say that because that's dualistic. You get it? It's non-dualistic. Understand? It has to be very, we have to be very clear on that. Because see, once we go, we go into words, it's very hard, right? It's very, because it's hard not to fall into these dualistic uh, uh, perspectives. Understand? So, so, so yeah, you say subtle, Truth body, they call it the, the truth body. <laughs> What's a truth body? You can say ultimate reality body. Okay, it's, it's basically our Buddha nature. It's that essence, okay? It's that essence, which we can only describe it as pure, tranquil, right? Unperturbed, undisturbed, untaintable, get it? Okay, not human nature, right? Human nature can be tainted, right? Can be, can be influenced, right? 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 Nurture versus nature, right? All that stuff, right? Okay? So that's different, all right? So, so it's not that, okay? So when, you are, when we are enlightened, when we say we quote enlightened or in a state of nirvana, actually all three is one. Get it? The three bodies are one, uh, merge into one. Okay? Get it? But unfortunately, when we're not enlightened yet, we think of the three as separate entities. Make sense? Right? We say, hey, there's a physical form, body, and then there's a, some spiritual body, and then there's something that's 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 indescribable body. Get it? Because we're yet we're not yet enlightened. Understand? So we think of the three as separate. Make sense? So so okay, so 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 okay, so that's the basic definition of that term, trikaya. But then there's a higher level. <laughs> 
That's why we have to learn Buddha nature, okay? At the Buddha nature level, there's another definition, and that's more the internal aspect. So the trikaya, what I just described, is more or less, you can say, external, right? We talk about the forms, the tangible forms, the spiritual form or the intangible form. I mean, yeah, say spiritual, intangible, yeah, metaphysical, whatever. I mean, it's, it's, that word, it's, you know, it's not very accurate. And then there's the dharmakaya, subtle body, the pure body, the truth body, etc. Right? That, that's very external, right? That's very external, okay? There's actually an internal side, too. So actually, from a Buddha na nature perspective or level of understanding, all of us have the trikaya. We just don't know it. <laughs> we just don't realize it. Get it? All of us have the trikaya. We already have it. We just don't know it. Or we don't realize it. We're not that level. Get it? And what are they? What are they? Okay. <laughs> and uh, Platform Sutra. Chapter 6, or something like that, I forgot. Chapter 6, towards the end, second half, or the last third. Sixth Patriarch talked about it. He explained it. Sangwei, right? The three bodies in one. Or he calls it the three refuge in one. Get it? Okay, so what are they? But the first one, the, tri the Dharmakaya, don't think of the forms. It's really our essence of mind. It's the Buddha nature. You can say it's called the Buddha nature, just for simplicity's sake. So all of us has that Buddha nature. Get it? All of us has it. It's just that we don't realize it. Most of us don't realize it. Unless you receive the Tao, then you understand, oh, we have this Buddha nature. Understand? And we have that door, right? We have that door. Okay? So that's the first it's that pure essence of being. Okay, I, I'm not going to do it because you really can't describe. We just say it's that pure, absolute essence. Okay, that 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 pure, undefilable, unperturbed, non-attached. All that. Okay, all that essence. That essence. All right. And then what's the second one? Sambhogakaya. What is that second one? It just means that we have this manifestation from the first one, from the essence. We call it. Wisdom or non-dualistic, non-attached, get it? Uh, 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 being, okay? Non-dualistic. It's wisdom. We call it wisdom. We call it the Bodhi mind, the Buddha wisdom, get it? Okay, that's, we call, I, I call it wisdom, but you know, but yeah, you can call it that. It's, it's really that manifestation, that state, that, get it? That state, because the first one, I, I can't call it a state because a state implies that, oh, that state is subject to change, but it's unchanging. It's always is. Get it? The first one, the, the Dhammakaya, it's always is. It's really unchangeable. It's non-changeable because it's absolute. Remember I say it's t dimensionless, timeless, etc. It just always is, right? But the second one, Sambhogakaya, within all of us at the Buddha nature level, I don't want to say it's changeable, but it is it is, uh, uh, you can say it's changeable. Yeah, you can say it's changeable. It's, it just means that it's that wisdom that's manifested from that essence, that, that, that unchanging absolute essence state, uh, that, that, that tranquil, pure, whatever state. It just means that it's, you can say it's applications too, but, but that's more at a basic level. That's really the third one, but, but that's okay. It just means that it's that wisdom, that state of mind, we call it, state of mind that we have this non-dualistic, right? No ego, no three minds, and then, say, then that leads to other concepts. No three minds, no four forms, none of that, okay? So, so that's the second one, get it? That's the second one. It's just, you can say it's that people can, we can achieve that traditionally, most people do meditation, understand? Through meditation, okay? That's how you achieve, okay? That, that's the second. Get it? That's the second one, okay? So that's the, yeah. When you say four forms, is that same thing as the four images? Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, four images. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, we can, oh, four marks, they call it four marks. In the, in the Diamond Sutra, it's, called, it's sometimes translated as four marks. Four marks, four images, four forms, okay, yeah. Because, some, you know, because it, sometimes, the, you know, the, the words get, yeah, get, get confused. Yeah, but then we have to define that, yeah. 
the notion of the four images or four marks is that <clears throat> we as non non enlightened beings, yeah, because remember we tend to have differentiation and we separate, right? We have separations, right? We say this is my body, that's your body. And actually the first one, ego, is the notion of self. I have a conscious mind. My, I have a self, you have a self. You get it? So you have your thoughts, I have my thoughts, right? So that's a separation. Understand? That's the notion of an ego. Get it? That's the first image. I, 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 I don't. I, I just want to finish trikaya first. Then, then, then we talk, we can talk about the four minds. Okay, four, four, e, four, four images or four forms. So the third, the third one. Okay, so that's the second one, right? So you guys have an understanding. Of what's the, the second at the Buddha later law? It's that, that, that manifestation or the the use or yeah, we say manifestation of that expression of the dharmakaya of our Buddha nature, which is wisdom. We call it wisdom. We call it wisdom. And what I mean by wisdom, it's not something that, oh, you learn through experience. Not, not that type of wisdom, okay? Not that type. Excuse me. It's that non-dualistic, non-self wisdom. Get it? Okay? It's that non-self, non-attached, non-dualistic uh, unperturbed wisdom because that's the that's you know we can say I mean you know most of us can only describe it says that it's this marvelous manifestation of our Buddha's wisdom or of our Buddha nature which I call wisdom okay or or marvelous wisdom or perfect wisdom they call it perfect wisdom so it is it is applicable in all situations make sense okay it's applicable in every situation all right but it's not fixed that's the key thing. That's why I say it's, it could be changeable because it's not fixed. There's no, I cannot say, oh, this wisdom is, applies in all cases. I cannot say that. You get it? Okay, just that it's, it's applicable. This wisdom is, <laughs> it's not that one. It's not a one wisdom. You, you got it? It just means it's manifest, it can be applied in every situation, but it's different wisdoms. We, can look, we call it different, different uses. Okay, maybe that's a better term. Okay, or different applications. That's really the same Boga Kaya, all right? But it has to be unattached. It has to be non-dualistic. Understand? Okay? And then the third level, the third term, the term, Nirvana Kaya. It looked, right? Remember, we, we talked about the body, the, body, yeah, the, the physical form. Yeah. It, in the, on, a Buddha, on a Buddha nature level, when I say internally, right, that all of us has that Nirvana Kaya, is what? It's all the different thoughts, different notions that we have in our mind. Get it? That's manifested in our mind. That's why we have, we can think, why we have moment to moment, in, the, in Buddhist scripture, they call sana, sana, sana to sana, right? Sana, sana, you guys understand what sana? It means moment to moment. I mean, there's a technical definition for sana, but, but I don't want to go into that detail. It means one, it's one, one seventieth of a second, or I, I forgot something, one seventy-fifth of a second. I forgot what it is. It just means, it just means that we have endless cycles of thoughts. Get it? Or, ex, or, or, or emotions or feelings. All of us has that, right? Right? All of us have thoughts, right? Or emotions or, or sensations. Get it? So that's the, the Nirmana Kaya. So, so from a Buddha nature level, all of us, all of us have the three. You understand? We have a, that essence that's indescribable, that's absolute, that's unchanging, timeless, dimensionless. We also have that, I say, the pure goodness, the wisdom, the, 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 the expression, the manifestation of that absolute essence. Get it? That's the Samboga Kaya. Right? All of us has that. It's just that whether or not we can manifest it, right? The only reason that we don't manifest it is because we have what? Attachments, we have emotions, we have passions, we have afflictions, we have quote-unquote ignorance. So that's why Samboga Kaya and Dharma Kaya cannot be sensed or expressed. Get it? That's, so we're stuck in Nirvana Kaya. So that's why for most not non or unenlightened beings, we tend to separate. We say, oh, you know, Nirmanakaya is the physical us, just us. You get it? But actually, we have the Sambhogakaya and Dharmakaya. All right? So the three are really merged in one, in all of us. Get it? So that's the higher level. Understand? 
understanding of the three 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 bodies mean okay so now you guys clear on that right I mean pretty it's pretty straightforward I think right right kind of right kind of <laughs> kind of so when we think say oh when we pass away if we have a spirit or soul like some people say where does it go well that's the Sambhogakaya get it so for unenlightened beings we have what we call samsara so People who do well, I mean, who, who do good things or charitable deeds or who follow the six parameters and who, you know, who are, you know, pretty, you know, good, good, and good, you know, live a pretty good life, quote unquote. I mean, when I say good, meaning I don't mean, you know, enjoy life. I meant, you know, they do charities, they do good deeds, etc., etc. Then the, the, their Sambhogakaya, their afterlife, their spiritual being will go to the celestial heaven. You get it? Okay, so we think of that once again as a separate thing. Okay, and then and then if they don't do good things, if they are murderers, thieves, robbers, etc., etc., whatever, whatever. Okay, they end up in the underworld. Get it? That's their sambhogakaya too. Understand? All right. Okay, so that that's how we tend to think of that way. Get it? Okay, so you can look at it that way at, at the basic level. Okay, but actually, all 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 three are within us. We still have that Buddha nature. All right. But it's not the Buddha nature that's suffering or that's enjoying, that, that, you know, rewarding, reaping the rewards. You get it? Or the consequences really are Sambhogakaya. Understand? Now, Buddha, and let's go back to when I say Buddha, when he was in the real world, I mean, when, when he was, you know, he has all three manifested. In other words, his Dharmakaya is still there. It's still everywhere. You can say it's everywhere, okay? And also, at all levels of the, uh, of the celestial realms, he's also there. He's also present. You know that? Okay? And, and then also in the physical realm. Okay? So, so it's just that that's the level <laughs> of... Uh, that's how Buddhas are. Okay? Because we're not at that level. So we can't imagine that. Okay? That's all at one. Yeah, it's all really one. Right. Because actually... Nirmanakaya, Sambhogakaya all comes from the one, the Dharmakaya. You get it? Okay? It's also, I mean, at that level. I mean, that. For us, we still tend to think, oh, no, no, it's separate. You get it? Okay? But when you are in a Nirvana state or, you know, whatever, Buddha, it's all one. Right? It's all one. All right? So that's why we, I go back to the fourfold negations. It's not just be existence and it's not just get it? Not just nihil, because that's because then that's extreme, right? That's either there's something always or there's nothing always, right? That that's wrong. Get it? Okay. So it's because if you're all one, then you can have everything, or you can have nothing too. <laughs> so so it's it's hard to describe. Okay. So so all right. So now let's go to the four what four images or marks, right? Okay. So that's the. I mean, that, that, that's an example. Okay, so there's a long list. There's like a hundred terms, probably a hundred terms here. You know that? Roughly a hundred terms. Okay, roughly. I mean, if you go count it, I mean, you go count it. Okay, so second page. Is the second page, tied The four, four marks, right? Four images or marks per the Diamond Sutra, right? So that's very basic too, okay? That's very basic. So I had a, the, the, the four marks are what Buddha used to describe that we as non-enlightened beings, right, or sentient beings, differentiate or, 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 or have these qualities, you can call it qualities, okay? So there's the physical and then there's the, <laughs> the, 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 the internal too, external and internal. So from the external, right, from an external perspective, what are the four marks? There's notion of I, right, the ego, I. Me, me, me. There's me, an entity called me, right? An entity called you, okay? And that's the second one, personality. That's a you, you. <laughs> me and you. So that's the first two, all right? Understand? Okay, what's the third one? Being. That's, it's multiple. It's groups. When we have groups, when we think of me, my family, your family, my countrymen, your countrymen. Understand? Groups, you know, groups, clicks, clicks, right? Clicks, groups, <laughs> right? That's, that, that's the third one. Get it? See, these are all external. I'm talking about external now, okay? Understand? So that's called being, 
beans, you know, maybe beans, beans, and, and then what's the fourth one? Life, yeah, but, but what does that, what does that mean? It's hard to translate, it's, it just means that we have a notion, it's really a notion of time, we have a future, a past and future, get it? That all of us, all entities, me, you, groups, all have a, you know, notion of past, present and future, understand? That's, that's, that's the basic meaning of that. So we all have that, right? Right? All sentient beings have this notion of, yeah, I was born, right? I grew up, I lived in this neighborhood, then I, I moved to this neighborhood, I graduated from this high school, then I went to this college, then now I left, I, I, I got a new job, I, I got married, I settled down, all this, and then in the future, I'm going to retire, I'm going to go move to Florida, sunshine, avoid the snow blizzard, and I'm going to enjoy, play golf all day, blah, 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 like that, okay, so that's, that's the fourth, okay, that's the notion of what we call life, you know, meaning there's a timeline, okay, that, that's what that means, get it, so that's the, the basic, basic interpret, I mean, basic uh, definition. Then there's a more advanced, but I don't want to go into that. There's more advanced too, right? So, I think the way I think why they translate that second one as personality. Yeah. I mean, it may sound kind of odd, but <clears throat> I think it's because you know, well, yeah, the self, right? The self, the first one, the self. Mm -hmm. It's between the first and the second that you have a comparison. Yeah, yeah, Compar differentiation. Differentiation between me you, and you and you. Yeah, and so that's where it's the called personality, personality right? Appears right. That, yeah. Second one you can call, I, I don't mean them, but it just means differentiation. Yeah. We have differentiation of an I, a self, and, a, and a an self other, right, and an other. Right, subject object. Yeah, it, so it's subject, that's subject that's object. Yeah, those two are yeah subject, subject object. object. Okay? The, the first two, yeah. subject object. That's, it just means differentiation. You can say differentiation. Okay? Make sense? Subject object, differentiation. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can call it that. Well, the third one, it's groups now. It's called groups. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's multiples. It's, you get it? It's multiples, okay? Uh, now, this is basic, okay? There's more advanced than Buddha nature. You guys should figure it out, okay? You guys should read the Diamond Sutra. Oh, oh not this Diamond Sutra. Ah, ah, among others, I mean. This, 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 con this, this concept is mentioned the second most often times in the Diamond Sutra, by the way, mm -hmm. FYI. Actually, the, the internal is, all of us have that too. <laughs> so, no, that, that's, the, that's the, it's just like a trikaya, same idea. But uh, since I don't have time, you guys can go figure it out yourself and uh, get back to